before I get you to turn to a scripture, I want, I want you to read with me. I, I, I want to talk about a scripture that I've talked a lot about to remind us and get us started. And if you want to put it in your notes to read later, it's found in Genesis chapter 4. And it's the story of Cain and Abel. And the Lord called to Cain and Abel, and he said, you know, it's, it's, time, for, it's time for you to bring your first fruits, your offerings to me. And the word of the Lord says that Abel came and Cain came with their offerings. And it says Cain brought an offering to the Lord, but it was not the first and the best. Abel also brought his offering, but it was the first and the best. It was the first fruits, the choices that God had demanded for them to bring. And the Word of God goes on to say, and I, I want to quickly get through this because I have spoken so much about it. But the Word of God continues to say that God respected Abel's offering, but it says he did not respect Cain and his offering. And, and this word respect, it literally means to look at or to regard. In other words, God looked at Abel and his offering. He said, yes, you're, 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 allowed, you're allowed in. You, you, that's good, Abel. But as for Cain, he turned his head and said, no, I, I, don't, I don't want to look at that. I don't regard that. I don't accept that, Cain. And again, I just want to remind us, because that entire story has blood co covenant written all over it. And I want to remind you people that are pushing forward in the blood covenant that as any, in anything and in every area that you do anything for the Lord, that God expects your first and your best. He does not expect you to do something. He expects you to do it first and best. And there is a difference. Cain brought an offering. Just as many people, including here at the dwelling place, they do a lot for the Lord. But it's not the first and the best. God says, I want you, whatever you do, I want you to make sure it is your first, and I want to make sure that it's your best, or I will not regard it in terms of the blood covenant. And again, there's a lot of people that, because they do not have this understanding, they say, Lord, I cry out to you. They say, Lord, I've done this and I've done that. Lord, I, I gave this offering, or, 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 or Lord, I, 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 I've done this for you. But when it comes time for the Lord to look at and see what he respects, he only respects that which is first and that which is best. Why? Because God is worthy of our first and our best. And, when, and again, this is not a message of, to people who need salvation. This, this is not a message of, of what do I have to do to be saved. Because Christ did everything for us. When you're saved, you receive him and you receive what he did. So we're not talking about salvation, but I am talking to people who want to go forward in victory, who want to understand that they can receive a hundredfold in this lifetime. For people who want to be that blood covenant example of Abraham living today, doing God's work to set straight what is going on in this earth, where God's people are the, are the, are the moving force in society, where God's people are the city set on the hill, where God's people speak to the satanic and unrighteous forces and say, no, you will not make headway. We put our foot on you, and we will not let you be victorious. Amen. That's who I'm talking to today. I'm not talking to people who just want to be a nominal Christian. I don't have, I almost don't want to say it. I don't have time for nominal Christianity. I don't. There's too much that God wants to do in my life, in your life, and in this church. I don't have time for that. And I, I, I know uh, that if I did have time for that, I, I feel very confident that we'd probably have a lot more people. But I'm not looking for nominal Christianity. I'm looking for God to fill the seats because he regards that we're doing our first and our best for him. Amen. And that's what he's getting ready to do as we build this city set on the hill. And if you heard what Pastor Sam spoke last Wednesday, 
then you know how the Lord has confirmed his word. <clears throat> but it must be in every area of our lives, our first and our best. Every area of our lives, whether it's our time, whether it's being at God's house, whether it's our giving, whether it's our effort, all of the above has got to be our first and our best. That's what God regards. That's what God looks at. And that's what, what is missing in, to some degree at least, in our lives. Uh, Israel, who is our example in, the, in going into the promised land, we might not literally go into a land, but we even have a greater promise and even a greater, a greater inheritance because ours is of the Spirit of the Lord. So everything they had, we get in more. We get in more. And they're our example. When we go and read about Israel going to the promised land, we can absolutely take the principles that God showed them and apply them to our lives and apply them to this church. And, and that's what I want to be doing on Sundays as we study Occupy, occupying the land. And that's what I want to do tonight. So if you have your Bible, I want you to turn with me to Joshua. Joshua chapter 4. Uh, Israel, when they went into the promised land, and when God was establishing that nation, they were never supposed to lose. They were in covenant with God, and the, the plan that God set in motion it, was that they were never supposed to lose unless, unless they breached their covenant with God. Israel was never supposed to lose unless they breached their covenant, which they did over and over and over and over and over again until finally Jesus in the parable of the wicked a vine dresser said that he has taken it and given it to another. Thanks be to God, he's given us entrance now into the covenant which is greater with greater promises. Amen. But Israel was never supposed to lose when they went into the promised land. And when God, the first place that they were to conquer was Jericho. And we all know the story about how they walked around the walls and they went around the city and the walls came tumbling down as the song said. But one of the things that's not sung about and talked about as much is what God told them. He said, when you go to Jericho, he said, as a first fruit offering unto me, you're not to touch any of the spoil. It all goes to me. He said, it all goes to me. He said, you're going to be so blessed that you're not, you're not going to know what to do with all your blessing. He said, but you're not to touch anything in Jericho that's mine. He said, I get the first, I get the best. He said, that's mine. That's the first fruit. And so they won at Jericho. And it was a great victory. And no lives were lost. And it was such a great victory that when Israel moved on to the next city, this small town named Ai, that they were so confident in what God was doing in their lives that the men of war said, listen, you don't have to send the armies out, Joshua. Just send a few men. He said, this, this Ai is so small compared to Jericho. And look what happened in Jericho. Just send a, just a few men. And we'll go and take care of the rest by the hand of our God. And so that's what Joshua did. But things went very bad at the city of Ai. And I want to pick up the story now in Joshua chapter 7, verse 4. 